Today I'm going to talk about The Karate Kid. That's my movie of the day. The Karate Kid, the original 1984. I think it's 84, I didn't check. Uh, lots of people in the film, lots of people in the film. <laughs> There's so many people in this film. There's just so many people. All these people in the background, you know. You know there's a scene in the, in the cafe and there's people in the background. It's just like, there's people everywhere in this film. But what I really want to talk about is the real star of the film. Uh, the key point, the, the, from a dramatic and a narrative point, is point of view, the, the, the part of the film where it really takes a twist and goes into something that is much more uh, cinema than just storytelling, and that's the, uh, the emergence of Chicken Boy. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember the scene, there are, there are a party and uh, uh, Daniel has gone as a shower so that he can cover his face so that he doesn't know, so that people don't know who he is. Although um, uh, Ali with an eye knows who he is because, you know, because she knows. And, uh, and then uh, there's, there's a character called Chicken Boy. He's dressed as a chicken and he comes and he throws eggs at people. Chicken Boy. I can't remember the name of the actor who plays him. I'm going to look that up actually. I should know it because I reference him in one of my books. <laughs> I'm going to change my glasses because these are better for reading. I did that one, I went to a quiz recently and I, and I changed my glasses. I have these glasses a little bit thicker so that I can read more clearly. These glasses are more kind of general. They just make things a little bit clearer on the whole. And someone said to me, why don't you get bifocals? Yeah, you're right, I should, I should get bifocals because doing this is such a fucking hassle, isn't it? It's, so, it's just a nightmare. Jesus Christ, I need to go lie down now after doing that. Chicken boy, chicken boy, chicken boy, chicken boy. Where's chicken boy? Eddie referee, doctor referee. Chicken boy! <laughs> That's it. Todd Lookinland. What kind of name is Lookinland? Lookinland, Lookinland. Look, there it is. Todd Lookinland. Can you see that? as chicken boy. Just extraordinary performance. The man should have won an Oscar for Chicken Boy. He's known for Men in Black, Matrix Reloaded, Star Wars Episode One. You, you know, he's such a big star that he's not in his list of achievements. Karate Kid doesn't even make it. That's what a fucking great big star he was. Robocop 2. <laughs> Having said that, Chicken Boy 1984, his next, uh, that's 1984 Chicken Boy, his next, uh, his next credit is The Perfect Place in 2008, and that's his, also his last one. I guess after doing Chicken Boy he thought, I don't need to work anymore, that's it, I can, I can retire on Chicken Boy, yeah, I can live a life of luxury, go chicken, go get my own little coop in the, in, in the Seychelles or something, and I can relax for the rest of my life. There's a show that I'm sure you know called Cobra Kai, which is based on the Karate Kid, and they keep, each series, they keep bringing back characters from Karate Kid and the subsequent sequels, Karate Kid 2 and Karate Kid 3. If they don't bring Chicken Boy back, I, I just, I, I'm going to have to go and kill the writers. Chicken Boy. Chicken Boy. And the great thing is about Chicken Boy is that the irony of his character, you see, this is why, how, how the depth and the diversity of characterization of Chicken Boy is that he's not a coward. You know, he's not a chicken. He's not yellow. He doesn't succumb to the, 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 the obvious cliche of someone called Chicken Boy because he walks through this party full of bullies, you know, and the Karate Kid, and he throws eggs at everyone, including the Karate Kid. What a hero. What a hero. You know, and he's such a hero, he's not in the rest of the film. He just waltzes off into the sunset. Chicken boy, the ultimate hero. You know, forget, forget John Wayne, forget Clint Eastwood, forget Mel Gibson in Braveheart, and forget Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon, and forget Mel Gibson in Maverick. <laughs> Come on, chicken boy. He's the boy, he will not stand for shit, you know. Or he won't sit for it either. He won't. He won't. He won't. He won't mount any position for shit. They should do. That's, I'm going to write a song. I'm going to write a song about Chicken Boy. Chicken Boy. Oh no, that's the, that's the wrong thing. See, I, I just I just sang Chicken Boy to the tune of the Rocky theme, which is also by Bill Conti, who did the music for the Karate Kid. Uh, weirdly, I don't know why. Maybe subconsciously, my brain made that connection there. Uh, so I think when I upload this video, if I if I include that which I'm going to do again now, chicken boy, then uh, obviously it's going to flag up. Copyright hook in left. You have hummed a song that sounds a bit like something that somebody else wrote once. We cannot endure this. It's a weird thing, copyright, don't you think? I think it's a weird thing. Because, you know, do you, did you know this? 
I didn't think so. Did you know that back in Mozart's time, there was no such thing as copyright? People would nick each other's ideas all the time. People would write. That's why you get something like um, uh, the the oh, who's it by? I think it's Rachmaninoff wrote a piece called uh, um, Rapture on a theme of Paganini, and it's a piano piece. And he's actually just, you know, in the title, he's admitting to plagiarism. He's saying, oh, I've written this piece, but the theme, the tune, the fucking melody, I've nicked from that guy over there. And he can't do a fucking thing about it, because there's no such thing as copyright law yet. And back in those days, it was perfectly fine. It was perfectly fine to steal each other's stuff and write your own version. People did it all the fucking time. And then somebody came along and said, shit. I've only written this one good tune. I can't. I can't do anything else. I'm. I, you know. It was a fluke. The first thing I wrote, and I. And I'm not talented enough to write anything else. So I'm, I'm going to have to create a law so that I can make money off this one thing I did. This one good thing I did once for the rest of my life because I'm a lazy fucking talentless twat. So I'm going to. I'm going to create copyright law. For fuck's sake, Shakespeare. What a fucking waste of fucking space he was. <laughs> Do you know what? I used to hate Shakespeare. When I was at college studying drama, studying performing arts, and everything was Shakespeare, Shakespeare this, Shakespeare that, Shakespeare did everything, Shakespeare done all the stories, you know, Shakespeare, 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 Shakespeare. That was my reaction to Shakespeare. Frequently. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Shakespeare. Often quoted, and usually, mm, often like I think they do it in Doctor Who and, and and some other things. It's kind of an ironic where somebody pre sort of pretending that they've made it up. It's in the Dead Poets Society, I think someone says it, and they pretend that they've made it up. If anyone ever says that to you, shall I compare these to a summer's day? The correct answer is no. No, you shan't. You shan't compare me to a summer's day because a summer, summer's day is a fucking ordinary thing. A, a quarter of the year is filled with summer's days. Summer's days are things, it's a day in the summer. It's not, it's not like I'm a fucking blue moon or a, or a, or a, or a, a rare plant that only grows every thousand years or something. It's a summer's fucking day. It happens every fucking year. It happens for like, I, I don't know, nearly a hundred days a year. It's a summer's day. It is not extraordinary. You know, that's like me going up to a girl and saying, shall I compare thee to a fucking wall? Shall I compare, because there's, cause there's four walls in here, shall I compare you to an east-facing wall? Yeah, yeah, will you go to bed with me now? It's just fucking, what is this bullshit? Shall I compare thee to this chair rather than the other three? Because this one is a, a summer's chair, I sit in this one in the summer, shall I compare you to that? Shall I? Shall I? No! Thou shalt not! I'm paraphrasing slightly here. I think it's, shall I compare this to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. I should think I am more lovely than an ordinary thing. Is that, is that really your seduction technique? Telling me that I'm more lovely than ordinariness? And what annoys me isn't the fact that it's a kind of a silly line, but it's really famous. It's one of Shakespeare's most famous lines. And it's bullshit. So there, that's my rant for today. I felt like having a rant. Today I've reviewed The Karate Kid with the excellent, excellent performance from uh, L L L T Roger Looking Glass, or whatever his name was, as Chicken Boy. And if I ever meet him, oh, that would be great, wouldn't it? If I meet him and go, and go hi, 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 oh, I loved your performance in The Karate Kid 2. Oh, no, shit, oh, no, oh, damn it, I've got it wrong, oh, egg on my face. Ah. <laughs>